Hello everybody, my name is Fariba and welcome back to my channel, The Medieval Reader. So today I want to talk about learning a foreign language and first tell you about my experience learning French and then give you some tips along the way about how you can practice in the summer, during winter break, but in the summer in particular you have a lot of time, there are a number of things you can do to help improve your language skills. So let me talk about my own experience. I actually started learning French when I was six but we weren't really learning a lot, just basic objects, classroom objects, for example, a pencil, a crayon, a pen, a stylo, etc. School supplies, uh, talking about food, talking about very basic things. We didn't learn a whole lot in elementary school, so I feel like I really began to learn when I was in seventh grade, when we started learning the grammar. Now, many of you guys have started learning language probably in high school or in college, so I'm going to talk about that time period where I learned the most French anyway. So the first book that I ever read was Le Petit Nicolas des Ennuis. I will put the information down below, but it's by René Goscinny, who actually is one of the authors of Asterix and Obelix. Um, Asterix and Obelix is this really popular French comic and it's available in English so if you wanted to read in translation you could. I could not understand anything when I first started reading it. I was in French 2 and my French teacher came in. French 2 is the equivalent of second semester French so I had like very basic um, knowledge of the past tenses and I don't think I even remembered the future tense, but this teacher was really pushing us to have class entirely in French and to make us read as quickly as possible. And that's the first and most important thing that I can tell you today. Try to read something as soon as possible. So fourth semester college or second semester, depending on how quick you guys are getting through material, but once you get the basics of the grammar down, start trying to read something. So the first thing that I did was I went to my high school library and I picked up this book. It's La Tristesse du Cerf Volant by Françoise Mallet Jory. So if it was translated, it would be The Sadness of the Kite, and it's by this literary fiction author, Françoise Mallet Jory. Now this book is not available at all in translation, which is fantastic. Why is it fantastic? Then I can't cheat, right? I can't go look up an English translation of this book. I have to read this without any help. I mean, without any translations anyway. Of course, I'm going to use a dictionary. So once you are able to use a dictionary is when you should start trying to read. Okay, once you know how to use the dictionary of that language. Um, so the first time I read this book, it took me like a month to read. I understood maybe 20%. That's really bad, right? 20%. This is literary fiction. I am beginning third year high school French, which would probably be about third semester college. And I'm trying to read literary fiction, which is ridiculous, but I didn't know what I was reading at the time. And I was enjoying it, and so I was pushing myself, and so I understood 20% the first time. I tried reading other cuter things. Um, there was some children's collection that I remember reading, which was about a devil who wants to be good, and so the devil decides that he wants to ask, like, the angels how he can be good. I think one of the stories was about a man who marries a potato. It was just the weirdest stuff, but that's my sense of humor. I loved it. I was going to read it. Um, and that one I understood a lot more of, but it was slow going in each situation because it would take hours to read a couple, like maybe a short chapter. It would take hours, but I would make a list of all the vocabulary and the verbs and thinking about how to conjugate those verbs. And before you know it, you start to pick up a lot more while you're reading, first because there are certain words that appear over and over again in the text. So you come across that. You're reading them in context, so the next time you see the word, you will 
think about it in the context in which you last read it, and you will remember it in that context. So that's why I recommend it. Also songs. Song lyrics are great. So definitely find song lyrics for songs that you enjoy and slowly learn them. I don't recommend hip-hop. You might not want to include that kind of language in your papers anyway. Uh, but read as soon as possible. The second time I read this book was a year later and I understood probably like 60% of the book. That's how quickly you can actually improve if you keep trying to read things. Today if I read this book I understand 100% of it, I analyze the text, I think it's a brilliant brilliant book. It's about, um, it's essentially about three or four generations of the family and how this one artist in the family has influenced all the other members. Um, it's about love and hate and passion in a family and also about the resistance during World War II in France. It's also about the love between a gallery director and his and this artist that the story is around. Um, the artist's name is Christophe and he painted a fresco. It's the surrealist fresco of a little girl reaching for a paper kite, but she can never reach the string and there's no kite at the other end. So it's actually really about what this image represents and how that's tied to all the different generations in this family. So if you can read French, I do recommend this. But as I said, definitely find a text that you want to read or at least you, you know, read a couple pages, see if it's interesting and go for it. Don't read in translation. Don't use Google Translate. Really learn how to use a dictionary push through it, and that's the most important thing for your reading skills. You might not be able to practice speaking with people in the summer, but you can definitely practice reading, and that will improve your writing a whole hell of a lot. And the other thing is that when you learn your grammar, it's not optional. Use good grammar in your writing. Put in the effort. Writing an essay, when you get to the essay stage, and not actually including the grammar skills that you've learned the previous four semesters. That's such a waste of time. Don't do that. And don't make the same mistake three times. First time you make a mistake, it's a mistake. Of course we all make mistakes. Second time, oopsies. Third time, it's like, come on, okay? Make different mistakes. Always make different mistakes. Make different mistakes, think about your grammar, and read, read, read all the time in that language without a translated edition, okay? Don't cheat. If you cheat, you don't learn the language. If you don't practice in the summer when you don't have school or in winter break, you're not going to improve that much. I mean, you really have to practice reading. So I'm going to start trying to do this myself. So I've taken four college semesters of Latin. While I was taking Latin last semester, we came across, we there was this very dumbed down, paraphrased passage from a satire by Ludwig Holberg that that the professor compared to Gulliver's Travels, which is one of my favorite books of all time. I love that book. And so um, as soon as he kind of gave me just some details about the book, it's about a man named Nicholas Flimius who goes into an underground world, he befriends plants, and it's a matriarchal world. So I was sold. I wanted to read it. So what's nice about Latin is that it's in the public domain and I don't have to speak it. Although my school's master's program actually had active Latin where people speak, write, and read in Latin. But I'm not going to be doing that. Um, so this is the first few chapters of the text. The Latin name is Nicolae Climii Iter Subterraneum, and it's by Ludwig Holberg. He was a 17th century Danish writer, and this is his satire. If you can tell, I've already read the first paragraph. I am not translating, although that is usually the way Latin is taught. Um, I'm trying to see how much I can understand of the text, and so I'm writing on a separate sheet of paper verbs and nouns that I learn, and then going over them from time to time, which is how I learned French. And uh, we'll see how this goes. This will be my project this summer, uh, so I will keep updating you on my progress. 
Um, but so far, um, I've gotten the basics. It seems like in the story, the narrator, which I'm guessing is Nikolai Klimii, um, or no, Nikla Niklaus Klimius would have to, this would be the, the title is in the genitive. I have to put it in the nominative. Okay. Um, he has finished his exams and he is going home and he talks about how he's really poor like many of his fellow students. Uh, so that's where I am so far. And uh, like I said, I will update you on it. But remember, three things. Number one, read, 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 read. Always pick up stuff, read it without a translated edition next to you, so you can cheat. Don't cheat. Two, don't make a mistake more than twice, because you're wasting your time. Get it right after the second time. Make different mistakes, okay? Make different mistakes. And three, when you learn the grammar, use the grammar. Writing an essay with poor grammar skills is just as bad as writing a terrible essay. I mean, it is a terrible essay. Grammar isn't optional. Use the grammar. Okay, so I know this is somewhat of a rambly video, but hopefully this helps, and hopefully you know what some of the things that I'm doing on the side. Um, tell me about your experience learning language, what you suggest if you are an L2 speaker. L2 means language too, so if you've learned another language outside of your own native language. Um, and tell me about your challenges um, and we can have some sort of a conversation about better practices when it comes to language learning. So um, I'm going to be making a review soon of Multi-U, which I finished reading, and um, I'll talk to you later. Bye now!